Hey, so today we'll take a look at getting started with Corona for Cinema 4D. Uh, first step, head to corona-randover.com and go to the download Corona page and you'll find the Corona Randover for C4D um, for Windows and for Mac OS. Just uh, click on the one that you want to download. Once you've downloaded, just uh, unzip the file and uh, go into the folder and run the exe. Accept terms and conditions. Next. Typical install is fine. Uh, you'll get messages showing it going through the installation procedure. And soon set done, hit next and finish. And that's Corona for C4D installed. So next thing is run C4D. You'll find that Corona has its own new menu here in the toolbar. And here you can uh, add various items, open the multipass, open the VFB, um, check the about, etc. If you um, want to create little icons like I've done here on the taskbar for easy access, that's simply Windows, customize commands, and you can do a search for Corona, and then just click and drag uh, whatever you need from here onto your toolbar, same as customizing anything else in C4D. So the next step is to set Corona as our render engine. Just open the render settings, open the renderer, choose Corona. Uh, these are all the settings for Corona, but actually we can leave those set to the defaults. So they will work just fine. Okay, so we're not looking at modeling here, so what I've done is just loaded up a free scene from Slashcube to give us something to look at. And with Corona set as our render engine, the first step is to add some lighting. The easiest is just to drop in a Corona sky, uh, and then we can render that into the viewport. Uh, Corona has very good integration with Cinema 4D, so you can render in viewports, render to the C4D native picture viewer, or render to the uh, Corona VFB. So you can see, adding daylight, we instantly have some very nice lighting. Um, I'm just going to grab the tag and drop the intensity down a little bit because I'm going to add in a Corona Sun. This will give us some some more directional lighting in the scene. And I'm going to uh, rotate it around till it's shining in through the window. And I'm going to lower the intensity of the sun. There are other ways to adjust the intensity that we'll uh, look at in post-process. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to lower the intensity of the light sources. And we're using full GI, of course, so the light is uh, bouncing around in the scene. And there we go. Uh, very nice lighting indeed. Now, um, let me just... Uh, just the angle of the sun a little bit more and it's a realistic daylight system so if I pull the uh, the angle down to make it later in the day we'll actually see that sun and sky change their color and we will get a much more early evening look to the scene and that's just coming up now there we go so that's um, very nice lighting if you wanted to add an HDRI rather than use the Corona Sky, that's easy. Just uh, delete the tag, uh, create a material like this one. I've used a free HDRI from uh, HDRISkies.com, and all you do is drop it in the self-illumination slot, and you control the intensity with the multiplier. And then all you need to do is drop that onto the sky object, and uh, you've instantly got um, an image that is used both as background and for lighting. And we'll look in a separate tutorial um, at, at HDRI lighting in some more detail. Um, there we go. You can now see we have a, an outside environment, uh, which is also casting light into the scene. So returning to integration, I can open up the Corona VFB, and uh, I can hit render in here. And uh, here we have all our uh, post-processing controls that we can apply. We can change these even as the render is ongoing. So we can apply things like exposure. This is the other way of adjusting the brightness. Uh, we can add uh, filmic shadows. The effect can be quite subtle, 
but you can see if I drag it up and down you see the difference it makes uh, and you can enable and disable those at the checkbox uh, apply LUTs now the integration is uh, such that as it's rendering here in the Corona VFB it's also rendering here in the native picture viewer and I actually have access to all these controls here as well if I click on Corona post process here they are and if I adjust the values here it will adjust in both images and of course uh, the values will adjust in uh, in both uh, interfaces as well so the integration is uh, very smooth it's up to you as to which one you prefer to use now if I closed out the VFB and picture viewer I'll show you one last integration with C4D if you want to add a native cinema 4D spotlight that's entirely possible drag this roughly into uh, into position where that lamp is Let's, uh, just make the spot a little bit larger and I'm going to bring the intensity up to a thousand ray trace shadows I'm going to turn the sun off just to make it more uh, clear in the render and render that and you'll see that the native C4D spotlight works uh, perfectly well um, and uh, that's a very useful feature. You can of course add a corona light and turn that into a spotlight but if you have native C4D lighting in a scene you'll uh, be able to use that. Okay, lastly let's take a look at um, what to do when you want a final render. Let me turn my sun on, turn the light off uh, and for this we'll want to pop open the render settings dialog and uh, select Corona and you have uh, three methods of controlling when the render is finished you have pass limit, time limit and noise level. Noise level is pretty much recommended uh, as the best way so let's just set um, going to set a value of 10 though a value of 4 or 5 is better for a final render uh, and one last feature that's very useful is denoising uh, turn it on to full denoising and let me just bring up the Corona VFB and hit render we can check here in the stats as to uh, how the render is performing we'll also see progress information down on the bottom left in C4D and uh, what it's going to do is uh, render to a set noise level. Uh, it works that out every five passes. You can see up to six passes we're at 13% noise and we're going to be stopping here uh, at a level that's really too high for a final render but perfectly fine for this tutorial. And I particularly wanted to leave some noise so I can show you how denoising works. Uh, if I bring this down to zero, this is the render and you can see there's a lot of noise left there at a 10% noise level and as I bring this up I merge in the a denoised version of the image and at one you can see that noise is pretty much all gone. Recommended value is usually somewhere around 0.5 or 0.6 this preserves uh, detail in textures but gives you a, a big boost to the final look of the image so those are the ways you can uh, set uh, Corona to stop and get your final render. I hope you found this tutorial useful. We'll explore specific details of uh, Corona for Cinema 4D like materials, HDRI lighting, um, all the post-processing options in detail in separate videos. And uh, just to get you started, that should be enough. Thanks for watching.